As we get ready to celebrate the Paralympic Games in Tokyo, people in Columbia City are celebrating a Japanese man who called their town home nearly 60 years ago. Shinzo Oki was a businessman who ran the country's first fermented soy sauce factory. But his impact extends far beyond the business he created. Here's his story. In the heart of downtown Columbia City, you'll find a charming space with beautiful plants, artwork, and seating. It's called Oki Alley, named after Shinzo Oki, a Japanese businessman who settled in the area in the early 1900s. What we tried to do in this alley is to create a space where people can come together, to create an opportunity for people to really live life together, but we've also tried to put little pieces in this alley that would represent Shinzo specifically. So who was Shinzo Oki? Columbia City Mayor Ryan Daniel sums it up pretty nicely. So Shinzo Oki is, uh, is, is an immigrant, he's an entrepreneur, he's, a, uh, he's an arborist, he's a painter. Um, he is, he uh, was an individual that really, I think, uh, is the embodiment of our community spirit. Best known for starting the country's first fermented soy sauce factory right in Columbia City, Oki employed many people, including soldiers who returned home from World War II. We're fortunate to have a can of the chow mein noodles. Here at the Whitley County Historical Museum, you'll find a full history of Shinzo Oki's life and many of his belongings, including old family pictures, the soy sauce bottle he created and patented, and his original paintings. He used different methods. Uh, this is definitely an interesting method of painting and this painting hung in the basement of the Presbyterian Church for, for many, many years and it is Christ and his fishermen. Pam Cook is a part of the curatorial team at the museum. I never had the chance to meet him, but his story just twists my heart. When uh, most Japanese would come to the United States they lived on the West Coast, and it's kind of out of the norm <laughs> for him to come to a very small town in Indiana. What did he like about this community? I think he just, he felt at home here. Uh, he became a Rotarian. He ended up president of Rotary. Uh, he helped found the uh, Crooked Lake Golf Course. Perhaps the most compelling part of Oki's story, though, is how the community of Columbia City stood up for him and his family after the bombing of Pearl Harbor. The U.S. government's response was swift and cruel to anyone of Japanese ancestry. Thousands of Japanese Americans were forced to leave their homes and live in internment camps. That would have been the case for the Oki family if not for this incredible moment of intercession. The politicians, the businessmen, the leading citizens of town uh, appealed to the government to the point that a man came to Columbia City and interviewed people to find out what Shinzo Oki's character was. He was so impressed that when he went back to Washington, he put an addendum on a bill that was sure to pass. And the addendum said that the Oki family could not be placed in an internment camp. It's quite the story, and one that Shinzo Oki's great-granddaughter, Leia Watanabe, will never forget. I was very surprised that people who knew of him, they, they were able to look past what his country has done and actually accepting him. Leia came to Columbia City for the opening of Oki Alley back in May. I bet it we, was a huge surprise. When we got there, it was even more bigger surprise of how they transformed the area. It was amazing. Leia never knew her great-grandfather, but thanks to the folks in Columbia City, she has some idea of what a great man he was. There has been this disconnect for me up until I got to talk to the people who who knew him and shared stories. So 
I felt more and more connected to him. Do you feel now that you have this lifelong bond with some of the people in Columbia City? I, I'm very appreciative and yes, I, I feel very connected to them. After a life of service to his beloved community, Oki passed away in 1967. It was a beautiful day. And he looked up and he said, what a wonderful day, collapsed and died right there on the golf course where he loved to be. And I can't think of a more fitting ending to his life. Every year, the Oki Scholarship is awarded to a graduating senior at Columbia City High School. Cook hopes stories like this one will educate young students about the life and legacy of Shinzo Oki. Quite an incredible man.